a swift retaliation to the April 22 Pahalgam terror attack, Indian Armed Forces launched Operation Sindor in the early hours of Wednesday, targeting nine major terror sites in Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Between 1.05 a.m. and 1.30 a.m., coordinated missile strikes by the Army, Navy, and Air Force destroyed key facilities of terror groups, including Jaishi Muhammad and lashkar -Iba. Among the major targets was the Marcos Subhan Allah in Bawalpur, Jaish Muhammad's operational headquarters linked to the 2019 Pulwama attack, completely reduced to rubble. Officials highlighted the operation's precision and civilian safety measures. In a decisive response to the April 22 Pahalgam terror attack, India launched Operation Sindor at 1.44 a.m. on Wednesday, executing coordinated missile strikes on nine terror-linked sites across Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Over 70 terrorists were killed and more than 60 injured as Indian forces used standoff weapons, drones, and precision munitions to destroy camps of Lush Kritaba, Jaishi Muhammad, and Hizbul Mujahideen. Key locations included Bawalpur, Muzaffarabad, and Kotli. Indian officials stressed the operation's precision, avoiding military and civilian infrastructure, while Pakistan condemned the strikes, calling them an act of aggression. Following its precision strikes under Operation Sindor in response to the April 22 Pahalgam terror attack, India issued a sharp diplomatic rebuke to Chinese state media for spreading false claims, including reports of Indian jets being shot down. The Indian embassy in Beijing denounced these as unverified and misleading, citing recycled images from unrelated crashes. Officials emphasized that the strikes, targeting nine terror camps, were precise and avoided Pakistani military sites. India also warned global media against amplifying propaganda, highlighting Pakistan's inaction on terror, and attempts to deflect blame through misinformation and denial. In the aftermath of India's Operation Sindor, a May 7 military response to the April 22 Pahalgam terror attack, Bangladesh expressed deep concern over escalating tensions between India and Pakistan. The Bangladeshi Foreign Ministry urged both nations to show restraint and resolve issues through dialogue. Reaffirming a neutral stance, Foreign Advisor Tuhid Hossein emphasized regional peace and the need to avoid further escalation. As India struck nine terror camps across Pakistan and POK, and Pakistan vowed retaliation, Bangladesh called for de-escalation, stressing its commitment to stability and diplomacy in South Asia. Operation Sindor, India's latest counterterrorism operation, drew both international and domestic support. Israel's Consul General in Mumbai expressed pride in India's action, praising the operation's name and affirming Israel's solidarity with India's right to self-defense. Domestically, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Defense Minister Rajnath Singh lauded the armed forces for their precise and restrained response, targeting only terrorist infrastructure. The operation, marked by nationwide security drills, represented a shift in India's strategic approach, highlighting its capability to execute deep, coordinated strikes while avoiding broader escalation. The operation delivered justice for the Pahalgam attack victims and set a new precedent in India's counterterrorism policy. Following India's May 7 retaliatory strikes under Operation Sindor, two U.S. lawmakers of Indian descent voiced their positions. Congressman Raja Krishnamurti emphasized the urgency of combating terrorism after the April 22 Pahalgam attack, but warned Pakistan against using current tensions to suppress democracy, calling for Imran Khan's release and fair elections. Congressman Sri Thainder fully endorsed India's right to self-defense, urging stronger U.S.-India cooperation against terrorism. Both lawmakers echoed U.S. Secretary of State Marco Rubio's call for de-escalation and peace, reinforcing democratic values and bilateral solidarity amid rising India-Pakistan tensions. India plans to deploy 52 surveillance satellites over the next five years to enhance defense capabilities, according to INSPITA Chairman Pawan Kumar Goenka. Announced at the 2025 Global Space Exploration Conference, the initiative will support the Army, Navy, and Air Force in monitoring borders and enemy activity. Half the satellites will be built by the private sector, 
with Ayasaro handling the rest. Goenka also revealed that Ayasaro is set to transfer small satellite launch vehicle, SSLV, technology to private firms soon, enabling rapid satellite launches during emergencies, crucial for national security and real-time military coordination. India's Ministry of Defense is set to approve a rupees 25,000 crore order for the indigenous quick reaction surface to air missile system, QRSAM, following the successful completion of limited series production by FI 2024 to 25. Developed by DRDO with support from Bharat Electronics and Bharat Dynamics, QRSAM is designed for 360 degrees aerial threat neutralization, including drones and cruise missiles with a 30 km range and 10 km altitude capability. Mounted on Ashok Leland 8x8 vehicles, each system comprises command vehicles, radars and launchers carrying six missiles each. Initiated in 2014, with a rupees 476 crore budget, QRSM replaces aging Soviet-era defenses. The Indian Army ordered five units in 2023, and the IF is expected to follow integrating QRSAM into its multi-layered defense system alongside Akash, Barak-8, and S-400 systems. Though praised for its agility and 90% indigenous content, the system has faced concerns about detecting low-hovering helicopters and production capacity at BDL. Enhancements like laser-based fuses have been added based on Army feedback. The move reflects India's broader push for defense self-reliance even as delays in foreign systems like the S-400 and gaps in IF squadron strength and long-range defenses, such as Project Kusha, remain strategic challenges. India is set to equip its Rafale fighter jets with the indigenous BrahMos NG supersonic cruise missile, marking a major stride in defense self-reliance. Following an agreement with Dassault Aviation, Integration trials will begin in 2026, after initial tests on the Su-30 MKI in late 2025. The BrahMos NG, developed by BrahMos Aerospace, a DRDO and Russian joint venture, is lighter and stealthier than its predecessor, with a range of 290 km and speed of Mach 3.5. The missile will also arm Tejas MK-1A jets, and be produced at a new Lucknow facility from 2026. The IF plans to procure 400 units. This move enhances India's strategic deterrence, especially for the Navy's Rafale M fleet aboard INS Vikrant and Vikramaditya, replacing shorter-range French missiles. Despite expected technical integration challenges due to system compatibility, defense analysts believe intermediary solutions and cooperation between India, Russia, and France can ensure success. The development reflects India's evolving doctrine of reducing reliance on foreign munitions and strengthening indigenous military capabilities with additional potential for exports. India and France signed a 7 billion euro deal on April 28, 2025, for 26 Rafale Marine jets for the Indian Navy, prompting French firm Dassault Aviation to announce the establishment of Rafale fuselage production and EMRO facilities in India. The move aligns with India's Make in India defense strategy and includes transfer of technology provisions. Fuselage production is expected near Noida or Jever Airport, while the main EMRO hub Damroy will support Rafale Mirage 2000 and Jaguar jets, with operations beginning within six months. Additional engine EMRO facilities by Safran are planned for Hyderabad by late 2025. The Navy's Rafales will be deployed on INS Vikrant by 2030, adding to India's existing fleet of 36 Rafales. Dassault will also train Indian and French crews and may support Rafale's purchase by Indonesia, establishing India as a regional maintenance hub. These developments enhance domestic manufacturing, reduce reliance on foreign suppliers, and prepare for potential future acquisitions, including the 114 Jet MRFA program. The initiatives are expected to create jobs, develop local aerospace capabilities, and deepen Indo-French defense ties. That's all from YKS team for now, hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.